Beware the Rake by Jarvis B. Chavez The warning signs of life are all around us, but so often in our arrogance we choose to ignore them. My name is Melissa. This happened to me in my last semester of law school. I had signed up for a class that required us to work under the supervision of either a private practice attorney or the legal department of a government agency. I had applied for, and had gotten accepted to, the district attorney's office. I totally lucked out and was assigned to an up-and-coming young female deputy DA named Claire. One evening, I had to stay late to finish typing the trial brief for Claire's racketeering case starting the next morning. When I finally finished, I gathered my things and left the courthouse. Claire had given me a lift to work this morning, so I had to either catch a bus or walk. It was a beautiful evening, so I thought I would walk. I first went across the street and purchased a small coffee at the convenience store. I would take a shortcut along the warehouse district down Maynard Street, take a left on Gillis Avenue, and then up to my apartment on Murphy. As I walked towards Maynard, I noticed an older homeless man drawing something in white chalk along the brick wall on the corner. As I turned the corner to enter Maynard, a kid on a 10-speed bike ran into me. My coffee flew out of my hands and spilled all over the place. I fell hard on the concrete floor and rolled. The kid did not stop. All I heard him say was, Sorry. I got up and noticed my clothes were all damp and stained from the coffee. I felt a burning sensation coming from my knee and shins. I looked down to see my legs were all scraped up and my stockings ruined. I decided to duck into a nearby alley to clean up away from prying eyes. I quickly kicked my heels off and immediately slipped off my ripped-up hosiery. They were brand new! Five bucks! Wasted! I dropped them into the dumpster. I pulled a small pack of moist wipes from my purse and cleaned the blood from the scrapes on my knee and shins. The scrapes didn't appear too bad, my left knee was a little sore, but I was fine. I was slipping back into my shoes when I heard trash cans rattling further up the alley. I squinted to see what appeared to be the dark shadow of a large grayish dog coming out between the trash cans and sniffing the ground. Probably a stray and, with my luck, rabid. I decided to get out of the alley to avoid running into it. I once again was headed down Maynard Street. It was a very badly lit back street filled with what appeared to be old run-down brick office buildings and warehouses. This must be a heavily trafficked street for commerce because I saw a number of big rig trucks and delivery vans pass by me. I also saw men in coveralls and work boots loading and unloading trucks. Then, a few blocks later, the streets were deserted. There was no activity whatsoever. It was strangely quiet, kind of peaceful. I was crossing a small street called Jackson. As I stepped onto the curb, I heard a sort of trotting. Then all of a sudden it jumped on my legs. It was a small shaggy dog. It seemed pleased to see me. Hey, stranger. How you doing, boy? The poor little guy was thin. He started to lick at my scraped legs. No, boy, don't do that. He must have smelled the blood, and it reminded him of food. All of a sudden, he turned and started to bark at the street behind me. He ran across the street I had just come from. He barked again, sat there for a second, and ran down the street. He, apparently, was satisfied with a quick lick and was off. Must be a male dog. I heard his barking for another block. Then abruptly, in mid-bark, it just stopped. I hope he didn't get run over by a car or something, I thought to myself. God, how much further is Gillis? My feet began to hurt. These heels aren't really made for long walks. I was starting to feel both tired and frustrated. I then felt something bounce off the side of my head. Ouch! I heard something hit the floor. I looked around. 
and found an empty Coke can. That wasn't funny. I turned around and saw no one. I was trying to figure out how I could have gotten hit by this can. I reasoned maybe it was the wind that blew it off the rooftop of one of these old buildings. I started to feel a little creaked out, so I started to quicken my pace. I was beginning to realize that I had grossly underestimated this shortcut on foot. It was only a shortcut by car. I walked a half a block and decided to pull out my phone. I turned it on and found the map of the town. I was following the line with my finger from Maynard to Gillis when I heard what sounded like a hard thump coming from directly above my head. I looked up and saw what first looked like a large dog jumping from the fire escape and landing on all fours as it walked out from the shadow of the building and into the yellow glow of the street light. I saw emerge this bizarre-looking gray-skinned creature that was completely hairless. The creature's body was long, lean, and muscular. It had an elongated head with tiny ears that came to points. Its hands consisted of mostly long claws. It started to circle me. I felt frightened. I didn't believe what I was seeing and could barely move. It spit something out of its wide mouth. It then looked up and stared at me. Its eyes were pale white. I looked down at my feet to see what it had spit up. It looked like crumpled toilet paper with red specks. Then I realized it was one of the moist wipes I had used in the alley to clean off my scrapes. What I saw back in the alley had to have been this thing. It then picked itself up onto two feet. I let out a scream and began to run. The thing tackled me from behind. We both fell to the ground. I managed to roll away from its grip. The contents of my purse had spilled out all over the ground. I quickly grabbed at my pepper spray. I popped the top and sprayed it into the eyes of the creature as it lunged at me. It grabbed its eyes and let out a chill scream like a bat. I ran up the street. I saw Gillis Avenue and turned left. To my surprise, there was a car parked outside one of the warehouses. I ran to it, then noticed it said security patrol. I ran to the warehouse doors and began pounding hard on it. Help me! Please let me in! The creature jumped out from behind the car and was making a hissing-type noise at me. I had made the mistake of injuring it, and it was angry. I ran to the other side of the patrol car, trying to keep the car between us. It quickly jumped to my side of the car. I heard the warehouse door open. An elderly black security guard with thick glasses came out, holding his gun. All right, who's out there? I said, help, this man is trying to rape me and he has a gun. To my surprise, the guard, without hesitation, lifted his gun and immediately shot in the creature's direction. The creature quickly turned its head to scowl at me as if to say, you owe me, and ran. The security guard ran after it for a half a block, then came back. <sighs> You all right, miss? He called the police. I stuck to my story that an unknown man tried to rape me at gunpoint. I was not dumb enough to try to tell them the truth. The truth would get me locked up on a 72-hour psychiatric hold at the state hospital. The police were transporting me back to the station by the courthouse to take my statement. As we passed the corner where the homeless man had been drawing... I immediately recognized the elongated head in the drawing. The homeless man had drawn the four-legged creature in white chalk. Below the drawing was written the words, The Rake, with an arrow pointing down Maynard Street. This was not street art. It was a warning. This is my piece of the truth. Now it's yours.